In this video, we're going to investigate what happens geometrically when you multiply two complex numbers together. And then we're going to be doing it, uh, this is going to feed in later, when we're going to do it more generally in modulus argument form. Okay? So, let's say we've got this complex number 2 plus i, and I'm going to use it in all four examples uh, to investigate what's going on. So 2 plus i, let's pop that on here. I'm going to try and be relatively accurate, okay, well, as accurate as I can on this big board. So here is uh, Z1, so 2 plus I, okay. Right, so let's see what happens when I multiply 2 plus I plus times I, okay. So I times Z1. So i times 2 is 2i, and then you get i times i, which is minus 1. So we get minus 1 plus 2i. So minus 1 plus 2i is this complex number here. So that is minus 1 plus 2i. Now, what do we notice? Just from the off, OK? Well, this one is 2 along 1 up. That's 1 along 2 up, OK? So the actual length of the complex number hasn't changed, OK? Um, what has seemed to happen is that it's been rotated around this is a right angle, okay? So it's been rotated round by um, uh, pi over 2, okay? Uh, going anti clockwise. So let's just write down our, what we're seeing here. So same length rotated by pi over 2 anti clockwise. OK, right, so let's get rid of that one and let's look at the next one. OK, so here we've got Z2 is 2i times Z1, OK? So 2i times 2 is 4i and 2i times i is minus 2. So we get minus 2 plus 4i. So minus 2, and we've got up to 4, so I think that's about there. Okay, right, so this one is 2 along 4 up, so it's actually twice as long now. So we've doubled in length, uh, but we're still going in the same direction, and it's still so, so it's still the pi over 2 anti-clockwise rotation, okay, from the original. So we've um, times 2 in length, so the modulus is uh, multiplied by 2, and rotated by pi over 2 anti-clockwise. OK. Now, notice how that the pi over 2, OK, it would be the argument of both i and 2i. So it's like the argument has been added on. OK. Right, hold that thought. Let's look at this next one. OK, so we've got 2 plus i, and we're multiplying it by 1 plus i. OK, let's just get the calculator to do that. OK, a little bit of practice for the calculator. So uh, you want to go to Menu and then Option 2 on your Casio ClassWiz. So we want 1 plus i in a bracket. So i is the uh, in purple above the number 8, uh, so eng. So have that, then times that by 2 plus i. 
we get 1 plus 3i. Okay. So 1 plus 3i. About there. Okay. That's our Z2. Right. Well, um, we've definitely increased in length. Okay. Um, it might be useful to actually know what the modulus was and now is, okay? So the length of Z1, so let's pop it down here. Length of Z1 is uh, two square root of two squared plus one squared, okay? So that's root five. And now we've got the length of Z2 of 1 plus 3i is the square root of 1 plus 3 squared, so root 10. Okay. Now, what was the length of 1 plus i that we multiplied it by? Well, that's got a length of root 2. And how do you get from root 5 to root 10? You multiply by root 2. Okay. So, we've multiplied by root 2 in length. Okay. Now, as for the argument, well, the argument of uh, Z1, okay, is the inverse tan of 1 over 2. So, 0 0.4636, etc. The argument of Z2 Um, so that's 3 over 1, inverse term of 3 over 1, so 1.249, okay? Now what was the argument of 1 plus i? Well, the argument of 1 plus i is inverse tan of 1, which is pi over 4, which is 0 0.785, okay? Now, if I add on... 0.4636 plus the inverse tan of 1, do I get to that? So inverse tan of uh, Z1 was 1 over 2, wasn't it? And we get 1.249, so we get that result. So just by adding on the argument of the 1 plus i. Okay, so... That means, so we've rotated uh, by, um, what was it, pi over, pi over 4, wasn't it? By pi over 4, anti-clockwise. So it appears to be that what's happening is that when you multiply by a complex number, Okay, um, the length of that, comp the new complex number, is the old one times the length of the one that you've multiplied it by. So that's your new modulus. And the angle is the argument of those two added together. Right, so let's see about this one then. Okay, so 2 plus i, and we've got 2 plus i squared. Let's hypothesize what the answer should be to start off with, right? If we can get this into modulus argument form first, and then we can work backwards, we can see if we get 2 plus i squared, okay? So 2 plus i, okay, had that argument of root 5. Uh, sorry, the uh, modulus of root 5. So if we multiply that by root 5, we would just get 5. So we reckon this should have a modulus of 5. And we reckon that the argument of Z2 would be the argument of Z1 plus the argument of Z1. 
So that's double the 0.4636. So what was it? Inverse tan of 1 over 2, double that. So 0.927295. Okay, so if we write this in modulus argument form, okay, this is what we think Z2 is going to be. So five lots of cosine of 0.927, etc., plus I sine of 0.927, etc. Okay, now if we convert that back into Cartesian form, five times cosine of the 0.927. 92729521 we get 3 and then uh, 5 times sine of 0 0.927295218 we get 4 so we are hypothesizing that z2 should be 3 plus 4i if it follows the same rules that we're seeing here so is 2 plus i squared 3 plus 4i. So we get 2 times 2. We get 2i plus another 2i. And then we get i times i. And we get the 3 plus 4i. OK. So we will, um, in the next video, Right. We will write up our results to this, okay, and we'll see um, exactly how this is all brought together.